my name is Daniel Parrott, and in this video I will be providing a basic overview of how to use the Tyco software. If you want to follow along with the document, I am using the Tyco user guide, uh, which is available for download from the Tyco Tracker website uh, at this link. So the first thing you want to do is to verify that you have a uh, dedicated uh, GPU device, a dedicated graphics processor. So uh, that, that is accessible through the OpenCL platform chooser menu. And as you can see here, I have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. Now, if you have multiple devices, if for example, you had an Intel HD graphics uh, and then NVIDIA, uh, you would choose in the NVIDIA device uh, and then click save selection. Uh, in my case, I only have one device, so I click on it and I click save selection. So again, uh, this software does require a dedicated uh, GPU, so uh, that's simply the, the way it works. Uh, so the next step is uh, you want to download the example data set. You may already have some images of your own you want to try with, but it's always a good idea um, uh, to, to baseline with something that we know works. So uh, there is a link in the document uh, for the example data. It's about 100 megabytes in size and you can extract it to a directory for Tyco. So that's what we're going to do, is we're going to add those files. Uh, so again, this is uh, that example data set. And so I select all of them and uh, have added them. So uh, they are already sorted by observation date. So as you can see, the date obs column, they, um, they are sorted by time of acquisition. So the next step is uh, the, these images, they have not been aligned uh, and you can verify that pretty easily. You can click on view image. So um, yeah, let me just go ahead and do that here. Um, <clears throat> so as you notice, um, yeah, when I scroll through the images, uh, you, you can note that there's been a meridian flip. So uh, obviously that's not gonna work for us. We need to align the images. So that's the first step. Um, there are lots of ways to align images. You may have your own favorite software. Uh, the preferred um, way to do it, at least for me, is I have a way to integrate with Registrar. So uh, you provide it the path to the Registrar executable, and then it goes to work. So I click OK, and it runs a script for Registrar, and the images are aligned. So. Uh, this takes maybe a minute or so uh, for these uh, example files. Um, but the important thing is, regardless of what tool you use, as long as it can guarantee good alignment, then you should be okay. Um, so let's go ahead and wait for it to finish up. All right, there it goes. So it's uh, saving all the files to disk. Okay, so alignment has finished. And now the next step is to go ahead and uh, navigate to where it saved them. So it saves them in underscore uh, a directory. And again, we import them. And uh, normalization is the next step. So I click on normalize images. And what that basically does for us is it provides a uh, consistent uh, brightness level from one frame to the next. All right, so as before, we import the images. And as you can see, we're now uh, in this directory. Okay, the last step before we do the tracking is to do what we call plate solving. So uh, in this case, what we can do is specify a lower and upper bound um, for the plate scale of the image. So you can give it something like one to three, or you can tighten those bounds if you're more familiar with your setup. In any case, you only have to plate solve the first image. So I'm gonna click okay. And what that's going to do for us is uh, it's actually running this uh, plate solver in the background. And it's very quick. It's, uh, it's already finished. Um, and the way that works is, um, uh, again, there are the settings uh, you provided with the, your solver, uh, the path to your solver program, uh, which is, in this case, we're using astrometry.net. Um, and so, again, this is in the... Uh, the document. So um, yeah, we're already down here, right? So um, 
So there, there is a, a link in the document that tells you where to get it. And uh, again, it's very nice. It's just uh, a, a nice way to integrate it in with the program and it it's, uh, helps to make things uh, more efficient. So when you can integrate things. All right, so finally, we can now go to the important business here, which is the synthetic tracker. So you can click on that menu item and um, what you'll notice here is a star subtraction threshold. So the purpose of this is to mask out uh, the stars, okay? That uh, would otherwise cause unnecessary interference. So we have these two slider controls, the course adjustment and fine adjustment. And so you can start off using course adjustment. And once you've gotten all you can out of that, then you can use the fine adjustment. Uh, in the document, uh, it says that uh, a threshold of 775 is chosen, so that's what I'll use here. So, um, it, you know, it really, you don't have to be, you know, 100%, um, but the, the important thing is that you've mostly masked out the stars, so that there should not be a whole bunch of um, uh, signal from the star remaining. And you can also click on this checkbox and see what uh, what that looks like. Um, certainly it would be, you know, if I were to do that, that, that would be too much. And if I do that, uh, then that's not as much as I probably ought to do. So, um, anyway, 775 is what I will choose here. Um, and I'll click on OK. So, sensitivity threshold, this is how sensitive we want the tracker to be. And so, um, yeah, and the document says to use value of 20. And basically this is dependent upon how many images you have. So if you have very few images, if you only have uh, like 12 images, then you probably ought to use you know, 50 or 60 or so. Um, but as you get more and more images, or if you have a target of known motion, then you can make the tracker more sensitive in general. So we're gonna choose 20. Uh, for this exercise and um, also in the document um, yeah we are going to choose uh, uh, let's see here uh, for this last setting again lots of settings here but uh, once you get used to the program it's actually not too bad um, so we're, we're actually just going to use the defaults um, so uh, let me go ahead and do that so as you can see, number of motion vectors, and um, uh, yeah, it says to uncheck that. So what I've got here then, if you can see it, is uh, essentially the same as what's in the document. Um, and so um, we're, we're going to run with that. Uh, motion vectors. This is this is simply. Uh, uh, how many ways is it going to shift the images uh, and stack them? So 222,784, that's quite a lot. Uh, but as you'll see on my graphics card, it actually only takes about 10 minutes um, on the RTX 2080. Um, and so that, that yields a vector pixel per hour of 1.269 uh, E14. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run. Um, and uh, because I'm not going to spend, you know, 10-15 minutes uh, of just the progress bar here, so I will stop the video for now.